Hello and welcome. I felt like it was necessary to create just a general overview video for this exercise in particular because I want to apologize in advance. I am throwing a lot of information at you for this exercise, but in the long run, these will just be documentations that we will reference as we move forward from here. So the core of exercise four will be to have you create a business card using these specifications, which I will go through momentarily. So page one of the exercise four document shows all of the sample documents that I've put together. These took about a million years to create, but I'm going to briefly go through those too. And then these are the videos, which you are watching now, and the preceding ones are going to give you more information about those titles. Also, in addition to this exercise, what will help you is I have some business card examples and brand logo assets. I'll try to remember to cover those in this video as well. And some inspiration to give you more ideas of business card designs and unique and creative ways people have done those. So the first supplement document is business card setup and info. And this gives you the dimensions for a standard business card, which is three and a half by two inches with a 0.125 bleed, which you will go through in one of the exercise supplement videos. Here, I wanted to show you even more detailed about things I was looking at as I was designing. So the space, the margin around where the important information is and the edge of the card, making sure that's within this safe area. And then I'll let you go ahead and read through some of that. So here are some very basic kind of wireframe front view examples of a business card, which usually just includes the logo as a minimalist display. And whether you have a tagline or something to go with it, there's at least a couple of different formats here. Business cards are a really good way that if you have some elements of design, whether it's shapes or lines or some kind of graphics that you can use maybe as a pattern or something you'll see in the examples. This is a great way that you can just play with design elements as long as it doesn't uh, distract from the logo. But overall, you'll notice on these business card, just general logo is we have plenty of space. You'll see the size of the logo in relationship to the card. We don't want it too tight to the edges. So we've got plenty of margin and white space around the logo. Here are some back examples, and as you can see, several of these do have a small logo area. Again, these are just kind of wireframes, but sometimes depending on the logo, if it doesn't, if it's not legible, then don't even bother including it on the back. Just let it display for itself on the front side. But I do want you to take note of the hierarchy of information. We've got the name, title, cell, fax, sometimes there's a an office number. Often it's good to include the physical address, the company website, the email address of the person, and any other taglines or information they may provide for you. And then just think about different ways that you can play with that information and make it legible and somewhat interesting. Also want you to take note of composition. In many of the examples, or in this example in particular, I wanted you to see how I may have used a composition such as rule of thirds or halves to balance the information. So you can see here that I have vertically centered this information on the business card. We've got kind of a balance here on the thirds. So keeping enough white space between the logo and the other information and keeping plenty of area so you're not too tightly against the edge of the card with any important information. Here in the supplement document section, these next two PDFs will coincide with these, the section of videos here, talking about file organization, naming, saving, resolution, color modes. And I did create a typography and page anatomy, which again, this is going to seem like a lot of information, but some of it's going to be a little bit of repeating, such as this page layout where it's got just, again, indicating trim lines, bleed, and margin, white space around the page. 
And then I wanted to give you more information on typography and where to access those character and paragraph palettes to help you with adding type to your business card. All right, so let's get into creating the setup of just the standard business card. We are going to create a new document, which will be print. And we do want to be in inches. This will be three and a half by two inches in height. And for this, we do want two artboards. And for this exercise, you can create the business card vertically or horizontally in format or one of each as in one side being one orientation and the other in the other orientation. For the document bleed, we want this to be 0 0.125 inches. And as long as those are linked, it should update all of those. And we want the color mode CMYK, which it should have naturally picked under the print category. And the rest of those settings are fine. Create. And now you will see you have two artboards. And if you don't see your bleed guides, you can go to view, guides, and you'll want that to be show guides or command semicolon toggles those. Let me go into the classic, essentials classic. You will see there's an artboards panel. We have one and two. Under properties, you will see it says edit artboards, or that shortcut is shift O, not zero, shift O on the keyboard. And here, you can zoom in or out with your plus and minus keys. You can duplicate these if you were to hold down option. You continue duplicating if you want to do some other examples to include. I'm just asking for one front and one back, but you're welcome to do some variations. You can also add artboards up here with the plus sign. And so you'll see in our artboards panel, now we have five. So while we're editing, we can also delete these. So I'm going to do backspace or delete, or here in your artboard panel, you can select the artboard and click the trash icon. So I'm going to do exit, or if I tap V on the keyboard, it will take me out of that editing. So now we can move into adding text, whether it's your title or the name or the phone number. That is going to be your text tool. And then you will want to have open your window type character palette and it should also include your paragraph palette and those you'll find more information in this typography and page anatomy keywords and that will show you more about what this the type palettes are so i've also included another asset these brand logo assets and this is a couple of artboards with some vector logos so you are welcome to use these as your logo on the business card and then up to you on what color palettes you'd like to choose. Try to choose something that colors that go well together and also try to choose supporting fonts that look like they would go with whatever the style is of the icon you've chosen. So you can use any of these. You can use if you want to use a brand name on the initial PDF, I've included a link to popular brands, which is Brands of the World, and you can download some of the most popular brand logo vector objects from that website. And then this is where these logos are located in the resources folder. So those you can use for your business card. This is the folder of the business card examples, and you can view that in grid view if that's easier. And you can just preview these as you'd like. So if I click on one and click the I icon, you can flip through some of these. And so hopefully these give you ideas on how you might add a logo and choose a good contrast. Like if it's a black background, you're going to want something very light in contrast and vice versa. You know, maybe you want to play around with typography. If you want to include any other supporting elements, here are some examples from new business cards and they've got some really interesting print capabilities such as embossing and foil printing maybe you want to add rounded corners on yours which we did in front of the first exercises creating rounded corners so feel free to do that on your business cards if you'd like 
All right, if we need to change the orientation of an artboard, let's go back into editing our artboards. And if we click on one of these, you'll see here at the top, we can change the orientation here to portrait or landscape. And whichever board you're clicked on, you can adjust that. And that location is also over here under the properties panel. You can change the orientation. So the mandatories on the front will be logo, and then you'll want to decide what color your background should be. I would like you to do a full bleed background so I can see that you have a working knowledge of creating a bleed guideline and saving that out with the bleed and crop marks for print. The video on file handling formats and saving. When you get to this thank you card, We'll show you how to create the document bleed and how to save that with bleed and crop marks. Make sure on the back you have your name and then choose a title. Just type in whatever you want for office phone, mobile, or fax number. So I want you to have two phone numbers on there. Please include an email address and then a website address, whether it's real or made up is fine. And depending on the logo that you choose, you can include that on the back side as well. The files you're going to be uploading for this one will be the Illustrator, a proof PDF at the trim dimensions, and then a print PDF with the bleeding crop marks. Like I said, feel free to use any of those example brand logo assets or create your own, or if you want to pull another company logo, it's completely up to you. I want you to have fun with it if possible and practice playing with some elements if you want to include any shapes or patterns and have a try at making something like that. Please be sure to check your file name and include exercise four, business card with your first letter and last name, underscore version one, and then be sure to add the proof and print descriptors on those particular files. And then you will upload them to the assignments, hand in folder, and the exercise four business card folder. So under assignments, hand in, exercise four business card. That first page of the exercise four document will help lead you through some important file organization and file creation and saving processes, along with the typography, which you'll be exploring more on this exercise. On the beginning of this business card setup info file, I have noted that the minimum font size you will want to use is six point for camel case font, such as this title or um, even a tagline. So you don't want to go any smaller than six points. If it is uppercase, like I've shown in this line of text, you can go down to four points or slightly larger than that, but you don't really want to go any smaller. So let's just take a look at this example piece of type right here. And in the character palette, you can see it is at 12 point font. You may need to show more options and you can change that to all caps here. You can toggle that. And here is where you will select what font you would like to use. So depending on what computer you're using will depend on what fonts you have accessible. I can provide you access to the Google font collection and also another good way to view the Google fonts is going to fonts.google.com and here you can much more easily see and visualize these. So whether you type your name as the preview, you can change the size that it's showing and you can also select different properties of the style. But I'm going to leave that up to you and deciding what the brand would be depending on what logo you choose to go with. So if you need to install that, you can click on a font in Google Fonts or you can find it in this collection here and download it and install it on your computer. And there are different weights too of depending on what the font is. So like for a light font, you probably don't want to make that one as small as you can because it's going to print. It's going to be hard to see when you print it. So I want you to keep some of those visibility contrast situations in mind. Just briefly, I'm going to show you if I copy one of these brand logo assets for this new document and paste it, Command V or Control V, you can see 
just for the back side, possibly. Or even if that's the front side. Maybe I create a rectangle. And I'm going to want to send that to the back. So object, arrange, send to back. And let's say we turn this into a different color. Or you can sample another color. But over here, let's say we start adding some of this other information. I'm going to go ahead and copy it from this demonstration. Let's say as we're creating our type, we've got it all out of line. I want you to use what you've learned with the alignment tools and you can select all of that text and go to align. And if you're on align to selection, you can horizontally align those or if you're centering them, use those tools that you're learning to organize and make sure everything is aligned properly. And you can select items and use your arrow keys up and down, or you can use shift to make larger movements. So click and drag to select, and then just move these elements around. You may notice I'll have to use a rotate on this. So as I hover, you can see these arrows at the corner. And if I hold down shift, I can rotate that 90 degrees or however many degrees incrementally. So I hope this helps get you started. Let me know if you have any questions and take care. Thanks.